If you clicked on this video, I'm sure you probably had an idea that it was going to be something negative. It's actually not. This is actually a positive video, but I've seen this recent trend coming up in the news of some people that were making remarks about how content creation is super difficult, it's really hard to make videos, and they just struggle getting through their day-to-day -day of doing their jobs. And the reason that I even had the idea to make the video was because of that, but I've seen these videos come up on YouTube quite a bit. I've seen this stuff over the years from different content creators. I've been watching YouTube for a long time. I've been on here for a long time, longer, way longer than I've been making videos. And so, like I said, I've seen this come up from multiple people. But I figure with all this recent buzz that was going on about it, it was time to finally make a video and address this kind of stuff. Now, with that being said, I'm going to throw out a couple of things that cover the more nuanced side of things. First of all, I realized that some people get burnout. That's completely normal. There's been a huge amount of videos coming up recently of major YouTubers with millions of subscribers talking about how they're leaving the channel. That's completely legitimate. I get that, that burnout happens. This is not about the burnout aspect. And I also realized that some videos take way more work than others. I realized there's people out there that make documentaries or video essays. There's a lot more work that goes into those than most of the typical videos, but for the most part, people tend to make more of the simple kind of videos, and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Those are the kind of videos that I personally like. I'm not a big fan of the super edited videos. And I'm also going to say this, that if there's larger YouTubers watching this, some of them may get pissed off about what I'm about to say. And if they, if you're one of those people, if you're a large YouTuber and you get butt hurt with some of the stuff I'm about to say in this video, that's completely fine. I don't care if People are going to get pissed off about some of the stuff that I say in this video because some of this stuff needs to be heard. Now I'm making this video because there are a lot of small YouTube channels, small content creators that follow my channel and they come from all different types of niches. There's people that make videos about videography or photography or music. There's a whole bunch of different genres. Gaming's a pretty popular one that I see on some of the YouTubers that subscribe to me. I've got YouTubers that follow me that have one or 2,000 subs. Some of them have a few hundred subs. I even have a couple that joined recently that have over 10,000 subscribers. And one thing I've noticed, some of them I think upload for fun. When I go take a look at their channels, some of them they upload for fun. Some of them upload because I think they are trying to make it on YouTube. Some of them I have seen like put in a lot of work to try to make it and then for some reason or another, I don't know why, they kind of fall off the, the wagon somewhere. Like I've seen some of the subscribers that I have that have one to 2,000 followers and they, they put out good videos and some of their videos get traction and then they just, for some reason, they just disappear. And I'm not sure why, but every now and then I will go check in on these different channels that subscribe to me because I want to see what they're doing with their channels. It's one thing that I do up on the platform. Part of me being here is I'm taking a look at what other people are doing to see what they have going on and see how they're running their community and, and how they're making their content. And the other thing that I will add is the ones that are doing it for fun, my guess is that some of them secretly probably want to find a way to make it on YouTube. They just don't know how to do it. And I think there's also a large group of people who are regularly on YouTube watching videos who want to start a YouTube channel but for one reason or another, they don't do it. Maybe they just have a fear of making videos or they don't know what they'd say on a video or whatever it is. There could be a million different reasons. So let me address the complaining part of things about making videos because there is a point to all this. And I, this, like I said, this needs to be covered. When I see these kind of videos, typically when I see them, they are coming from people that are making at least a low six figure income from making YouTube videos, but some of them make seven figures plus. There's even YouTubers that make eight figures a year. And when I watch these videos, they come across as being very out of touch. And I think that's why it pisses a lot of people off when they see these kind of videos. And it's why it pisses me off personally. And I'll get into that here in just a little bit. I'll give my own reasoning for it. Everyone's got their own reasons for it. I've got mine when I see these kind of videos. But it comes across as really out of touch. And when they say that, oh, well, this is such a hard job. Making videos is so difficult. Okay, well, there's one aspect to it that, yeah, it's, it does take work to make videos. Anything good in life takes work. But to go and say that you have such a, the, that for these people to go and say that they have such a hard time making videos and that it's a struggle for them to get through their day of trying to come up with video content, it's like, well, 
some of these people, it's like they've never worked in real jobs. And I'm going to say this, and I'm not going to call out any names because I'm not a drama channel. I'm not going to make personal attacks on other people. But I am going to say that I have come across plenty of YouTube channels where people will make videos about saying that it's so hard to make YouTube videos and it's really hard to have an online presence and do this kind of work. And then I go look at some of their other videos and some of them are out there flexing. Some of them have three different luxury vehicles that cost three or $400,000. And by the way, I have no issue if someone wants to go buy a McLaren or a Lambo. But it's like, don't go and make videos complaining about how hard it is when you are so out of touch. And the other thing, so also I've noticed the other recurring theme that comes up when I see these kind of videos is that a lot of the people that make these kind of videos saying that this is so difficult have not actually had a real job, so to speak. I know there's some people that don't think YouTube is a real job. Depending on how serious someone takes it, it is a job. But there is, is certainly a huge divide, and I again will cover this in more detail later. There is a huge divide between going out and working for someone else and being able to come on YouTube and make videos and get paid to do it. And some of these videos, some of these videos that I've watched, and some people might already know who it is what I'm talking about when I say this. There's a couple of YouTubers that I've watched their videos and I've seen them talk about how hard they work. But then they say, they'll also make videos slamming other people, saying that other people aren't as good as them if they aren't going out making six figures a year and that some people are worthless if they don't work a certain type of job that has this prestige to it. And these people, when I go watch some of their other videos, they say things like, oh, well, I've never actually worked another job for someone else. I've only ever done YouTube. And these are people that are making millions of dollars. And that is such an out of touch statement to come on YouTube, make a video complaining about how hard it is when you've never had to go out and actually work a job for someone else, work at a fast food joint, where I, a lot of people that I'm, are watching this channel, I'm sure probably had to work at some sort of a service industry job. When I was younger, I worked a while working at a fast food place, being treated like garbage by customers. I've also had a couple of years of construction experience. And for anyone that hasn't done construction work, I'm sure most people could imagine that there are days that the work is just absolutely grueling. Where I was working 10, 12 plus hour days out in 100 plus degree heat or sometimes in the freezing cold weather. And you're moving around hundreds of pounds, thousands of pounds of weight all day long. You come home, your body feels like it's halfway broken. You're extremely exhausted and you barely have enough energy to do anything else because you put in so much time at work. So when these people come on and whine and complain about how hard they have it, it's like, no, don't be coming on here. I don't know how we ended up here where people come on and think that it's okay to act like this because it pisses people off. And something that it seems like a lot of these people leave out is that they don't consider that the people that watch them have their own struggles that they are going through in their day-to-day -day life. There are plenty of, and people have been struggling for years now. This isn't just in the last, last couple of years. This has been going on for a long time of people that are struggling. It's just so happens that it's gotten worse recently. I make a lot of IT content. I've got a lot of people in the IT industry that follow my videos. And right now throughout the IT industry, just in the last month or two, Tens of thousands of people are losing their jobs at IT companies. There's people in all other sorts of industries that are losing their jobs. People are struggling to make it right now. And what's even worse is when you go take a look at some of these forums and places like that of people that are talking about trying to go through the job hunt, is I will see people post, just in the last couple of days, I've seen there's a YouTube channel that I follow, and they're, they're posting screenshots of the application process and there's questions like, when you were in school, how far up did you place in your math class? And you need to provide evidence of how far up you were in your math class. This is the kind of BS that people have to deal with. And there's another YouTuber that I follow. His name is Joshua Flute. You should go check him out. I've got him in my recommended channels list. If you go down to my main YouTube page and go down to where I've got the featured channels, Joshua's channels listed in there. He made a video here recently called The Working Class. It was posted yesterday as of me filming this. It's called The Working Class Are Treated Like Toddlers. And I would recommend that everyone that's watching this video, you should go check that out to get an idea of how bad corporate America is becoming. These people are being treated like children. They are being insulted. They are being degraded by, and I get that there's some good employers out there, but there's also a lot of garbage employers. And these employers that in these videos that Josh calls out, 
they are degrading their employees and making them do absolutely stupid stuff. And they're doing it to break the mental condition of these people. And when I go watch these YouTube videos of these YouTubers who are making six or seven figures a year complaining about how hard they have it, it's like, don't, don't be starting that kind of BS here acting like these people have it so hard. They have so many opportunities that just come to them and it's really out of line and off base for them to be going and complaining about their position. And what it really comes down to also with these videos of these people complaining is that these people that are going out and struggling, they have to put up with these garbage bosses and the em employees who try to backstab them to try to rise up the ranks. And the people that can, they just cannot figure out a way to make a living wage and they're living paycheck to paycheck struggling to get by. Then when they come on to the internet and they see these videos of these people whining and complaining about how hard they have it when these people are millionaires, it makes these people resent these big YouTube video creators because these people dream of having a job like that. They wish they could do something like that. Now I'm going to drop a link to an article down in the description if you want to go read it. Then these articles have been coming out for quite a few years. This was an example of a recent article that just came up about five months ago. This was back in November, talking about how there are camps that are teaching kids to be YouTubers that are popping up all over the country right now. And if you go down to the fourth and fifth paragraph is really the important part of this. And it says, becoming a full-time creator has emerged as one of the most popular career goals among school children in America and across the globe. Nearly 30% of kids aged 8 to 12 list YouTubers as their top career choice in a global survey conducted in 2019. And the thing is, is that these numbers keep going up as the years go on because these people are looking at how these people are able, these people that make it on social media, they go and they look at that and they're like, wow, I, I would love to have that. I wouldn't have to put up with uh, putting up with some of these bosses that I've worked with or some of these employees or potentially being laid off at any point, even though I'm producing and I'm doing good work, some of these people just lose their jobs out of the blue. They want this kind of lifestyle. It says, the same year, a morning consult survey of Gen Z and millennials in the United States found that more than half of 13 to 38 year olds, 54% to be exact, wanted to become social media influencers. So like I said, people really want the lifestyle of being able to create YouTube videos. These people are willing to walk. The people that want to do this are willing to walk across broken glass to do this. And I think that's why it breeds a lot of resentment when they see these kind of people making these videos is they're like, you're in a position where, I know this word gets thrown out a lot by people and there's a big political context behind it. I'm not, I'm not a political person. I don't make political content. I'm gonna use the word here because it does apply. The people that make these kind of videos talking, these millionaires complaining about how hard doing this kind of work is, they're extremely privileged. And like I said, it's completely off base for them to be making these YouTube videos. Now, I'm going to bring up some other stuff here. Because like I said, this is actually a positive video and that's what I'm getting to. I'm giving you the context. Now we're getting into the positive side of things because I want to try, part of the reason I make YouTube videos in the first place is try to try to educate people, build people up, give them a perspective that they didn't have before. In some way, it improves their lives, whether they learn, you know, I've got videos showing how to make websites on my channel or talking about how to learn certain IT skills, whatever the case is. And over the past nine or, I think I've been on YouTube for about nine months now, been back on YouTube for about nine months, I've gained quite a bit of perspective on some things. Now, I don't consider myself to be a YouTuber. I consider myself to be a person that uploads YouTube videos. Maybe some people would disagree because I'm getting paid to do this now. Maybe people would say, well, you actually are a YouTuber. I wouldn't want this as my full-time job. I'm doing other stuff that I actually prefer, but it is what it is. But there are certainly some big upsides to this that people might not consider. And when they go watch these kind of videos, my other concern when people watch these kind of videos, because I've got a lot of smaller YouTubers that follow my channel. And I think that they watch some of the bigger YouTubers because they're watching the plays that those people make and they're like, oh, I see this worked for this person. How can I take that strategy and make this work for me? People are trying to figure out a way to make this work because they really want to do this. 
And when they go and see these big people that are making millions of dollars that some of these smaller YouTubers might look up to, it puts poison in their mind thinking, oh, well, this person said that YouTube is becoming really saturated, which it's not. I'll cover that more here in just a little bit. YouTube is becoming really saturated. It's hard to make it right now. You know, there's so much work that's going to be involved in doing this. And I, you know what? I'm just going to give up because this person is saying how hard it is. That's a bunch of garbage. And like I said, I can't stand that kind of mentality. And those types of toxic videos coming up of trying to tear people down and rip their dreams apart, I have zero patience for that kind of stuff. And it pisses me off that these people that get into these positions think that it's okay to make those kind of videos, which it's their channel. They're free to make whatever videos they want to. Fortunately, I have seen a lot of people go roast these people because they deserve it, because some of these views are just completely out of line. Now, getting back to the positive part, let me, let me put some things into perspective for you. Because as of the time of me filming this video, I have 4,500 subscribers. And also, like I said, I know some people might consider me to be a YouTuber. I'm really not taking this super seriously. I'm not doing this full time because I don't want to. There is a certain type of audience that I'm looking for. And I have made, I've been making a certain type of YouTube video. I've been making my videos in a certain way because I want to attract a very particular audience. I'm not going for a million subscribers here. I'm going for a small core audience who really wants to watch the work that I put out. Here's the other thing. A lot of great things could start happening in your life. You could start getting a lot of opportunities coming your way, and it's going to depend on the niche that you do. I have a niche there where there's a lot of industry professionals that follow me, and I make content that's kind of focused around the industry. So if you are, let's say, a, you want to make videos about gaming, things are going to look a little different for you. But I started getting opportunities coming towards me when I had about 100 subscribers and I have continued to get more opportunities and continue to get bigger opportunities. I have had sponsorship opportunities come along that I have turned down because I don't think the sponsors would be a good fit for my channel. I don't want to push things towards my subscribers that I don't truly believe in. There's really only a very small amount of, of sponsors that I would ever consider working with. And I, like I said, this isn't my full-time job. I don't want it to be, so I'm not prioritizing doing things like sponsored content or anything like that. But regardless, I have had multiple opportunities coming my way. Now, let me put, so like I said, I'm going to put things into perspective for you. So right now, I've got 4,500 subscribers. I'm going to read some stuff off to you. So I have a very small channel in the grand scheme of things. I would say maybe everyone would kind of have their own opinion on this. I don't think you could really say that you're, you have a mid-sized channel until you get to 100,000 subscribers. That's where you're really starting to gain quite a bit of a following and an audience is when you get to 100,000. I'd consider anything under that to be a small creator base. Now, 4,500 subscribers. I'm just going to read some numbers off to you. In ad revenue, I'm going to read off some of the days that I've had. So here, here's a day where I had $8, $11, $23, $29, $12, $13, $11, $9, $41, $33, $17, $19, $17, $50. $17, $50. And I'm not even trying to... So when you watch, when you look at some of my videos and like the most recent video that I did talking about the cookie hijacking, I only did a pre-roll ad. I, at most, I will put in one, maybe... I think there's a couple of videos that I put in two mid-roll ads. At most, I do one mid-roll, but some of the more recent videos that I've done, I only do a pre-roll ad. So some of these days, I could have seen a hundred plus dollars worth of ad revenue because I make videos that are an hour long talking about how to make a website or going really deep on some sort of an IT topic. And as of the time of me filming this, today, as of me filming this, I'm going to completely smash the previous view record. And so my ad rev for today is probably going to be $60 to $70. And if I was running a bunch of mid-rolls on my videos like most people do, potentially would be looking at a couple hundred dollars worth of ad revenue just from today's viewership. Now here is why I'm saying this. There's a reason why I'm saying all this. Now, like I said, YouTube is not my full-time job. I don't want it to be. I just want to make YouTube videos that I really want to make. The videos that I make are because they are on topics that I really want to talk about. I really don't know if any, why anyone would ever want to make videos talking for an hour plus about topics that they're not really interested in. Maybe there's some people that do that. More power to them if that's the case. 
but I'm not interested in doing that kind of stuff. Now, with all that being said, I have a small YouTube channel and I'm already seeing quite a bit of results. Now, one of the things that I'm going to talk about, so I have mentioned already that some people would like to be able to escape the current place that they are at in life. And the thing is, is that these videos, I'm making these videos one time and then I put them out there, they are out there forever. They will continue to make money forever. There's a there's two different types of ways that you can make money in life. There there's the people that trade time for money and then there are the people that trade typically like some sort of skill or expertise for money. So if you think like surgeons for example, maybe there's a case to be made that they get paid per hour but they really would get paid like per procedure for example. They are getting paid based on what it is that they do. They're not getting paid based on trading time for money. And the thing with these YouTube videos is I am already at the point now where I make money while I sleep. I make money while I'm eating food or watching a movie or doing chores or doing my regular job, which is my focus right now. So it's like, this is a way out for people that take this seriously. And it's a way for, I mean, this is about as close to passive income as you can get the fact that you can put five, 10, maybe 20 hours if you're really going for some insane kind of video, 20 hours into a video, put it out there one time, you get paid for as long as your YouTube channel is around. I, that's one hell of an opportunity. Not to, that's putting aside things like affiliates and sponsorships for those that would rather do YouTube full time and not pursue some sort of career or whatever where they're making money from some, some other source. And here's the other thing that I'm going to say because I'm trying to give people perspective. Like I said, the people that, the small YouTubers who are watching my channel who have watched me over the last few months, really, things have really changed over the last few months. And I realized that some of you are probably looking at my channel trying to figure out some of the things that I'm doing to see if you can do this for your channels. I'm going to say this. Now, I've said that I wouldn't consider YouTube to be a job. I really mean that. I don't consider this to be a job. But that being said, because I am making money off of the YouTube channel, I suppose that I probably should call this a job of some sort. I would not turn this down over any other kind of work that I have done. I have done a my fair share of different jobs throughout my life. I've worked in plenty of different places and nothing has ever been this easy as coming on YouTube and making videos. The fact that I can come onto YouTube and get paid to make videos about things that I really want to talk about that I would have made videos anyway. It just so happens that I'm getting paid ad revenue for this because why not? The options there, I might as well turn it on. The fact that I'm making money to get to come on here and make videos about things that I want to talk about, I, that's just absolutely ridiculous. This kind of stuff did not exist 50 or 100 years ago. This is an unbelievable opportunity for people to be able to come on and take advantage of. I would not trade this for the the construction work that I've done or me when I was younger working in fast food or any of the other jobs that I've had. I would not trade this for any of that. If I had to pick between this or anything else, this is hands down been the most easy, straightforward kind of work that I've done. But I also have that perspective of where I was struggling to make it through in certain kinds of jobs. And I realize that maybe right now I'm being a little more passionate about what it is that I'm talking about, but there's good reason for that because I'm trying to drive a point home. These people that go and whine and complain have no idea how easy they have it. And some of them, to be quite blunt, were born with silver spoons up their assholes. When I go take a look at the background of some of these people that have never had to go work a job where they were breaking their body for 10 to 12 hours a day, putting up with bosses, that threaten to fire them at any point if they didn't brown nose or, or whatever the case is. This is lightweight stuff compared to the stuff, the, the other stuff that I've done. There's no way in hell I would turn this down. And for those of you who are new to this or you've been wanting to look at doing this, you haven't started or you're just starting or you're, you've kind of dipped your toes but you really want to take it serious, just jump in and start doing it. Don't let these people that are making this kind of toxic garbage content try to pull you down and make you think that you shouldn't do this because it's challenging. Of course it's challenging, but like I said, compared to the other jobs that I've had, this is lightweight. This is easy work compared to what I've done in the past. You know, some of these people have not had to get up at two, three, four o'clock in the morning, go work a labor intensive job for 12 hours a day, come home, have a two hour commute, 
you have just barely enough energy to eat some food, maybe watch a movie because you're too tired to do anything else. And you get up, you do it the next day, and that is your life. You know, when I take a look at some of these bigger content creators that make six or seven figures a year doing YouTube, they get to go and do things that other people would only ever get to dream of doing. I watch some of these people, they get to travel all over the country or travel all over the world. They get to meet tons of different people. They get so many opportunities, opportunities that aren't necessarily paid, but really cool opportunities that people would love to have. Just the amount of ungrateful, the ingratitude that I see with some of these people just is unbelievable. It's completely off base. I'm going to say this, making videos is going to be as hard as you make it out to be. The people that spend 10, 20, 30, 40 hours making these documentary videos or making these video essays, they choose to put in that much work. And so I don't think that they should be making videos, and I haven't seen it from the people that do like video essays, I don't see them complaining. Magnates Media is an example. If you wanna see an example of a person that does really good video essays, Magnates Media is a perfect example. They have done some fantastic videos and put in a lot of work on their stuff. Now the thing with Magnates Media is the person that's behind that channel, they put in as much work as they decide they want to do, and that's completely okay. But at the end of the day, making videos is going to be as hard or as easy as you make it to be. If you put in all the extra work to learn how to be really efficient with video editing, then it's going to make your life easier. That means that you have to put in some extra hours and go through the frustration of learning something like DaVinci Resolve. But once you get through that, it makes the process of making videos much easier. Once you start talking to a camera regularly, it makes the process of talking to a camera much easier. It's going to be as hard as you make it out to be. And here's the thing, I have seen plenty of examples because I spend quite a bit of time, YouTube is now part of my craft. Even though I don't want this as my full-time job, this is now part of my craft and I'm working constantly. I typically put in 30 minutes to an hour on YouTube training specifically, trying to figure out how to make become better at YouTube because I can't neglect my actual uh, other work. But I'm putting in that work to improve my ability to make YouTube videos. And something because I study a lot of YouTube channels. And when I say a lot of YouTube channels, I truly mean a lot because I have several hundred small YouTube channels that follow me, but I also study a ton of other channels. And one thing that I have seen come up as a recurring theme, now if you don't want to do this as a full-time job and you want to try to do something prof like a professional industry and you want to use YouTube as a vehicle to augment that, I'm going to say this, I have come across numerous people that had one or 2,000 subscribers that made life-changing amounts of money just from having a small channel that got a couple hundred views on each video. This was before I was using my second brain, so I don't have, I wanted to, I would have liked to have been able to bring up some of these links, but some of these have just been lost with time because I can't remember them. There was one example of a real estate agent that came up that I was looking at his channel and how he was doing things. He got 100% of his business from his YouTube channel, 100% of his leads to close and, and sell houses. All he did was make YouTube videos and when I looked at his channel, he had, it was right around a thousand subscribers getting about a couple hundred views on each of his videos. And over the three years that he had been making YouTube videos, he made 750,000 in what's called GCI in the real estate industry. It's gross commission income. $750,000 to make one or two YouTube videos a week uh, just talking about the local real estate market. And there's people that can do this in plenty of other industries. It could be people with a clothing brand or people with some sort of beauty product or some sort of a SaaS company. There's a million different things that people could do. And I have seen people from all these different industries go and do that. Now, if you wanna be a full-time YouTuber, you only want to make content, you're going to have some extra challenges, but still, like I said, I'm not taking this seriously. This is not my full-time job. I've got 4,500 subscribers right now, and I'm already seeing, like I said, today's gonna to be my first day where I'm pretty sure I'm gonna close the day at 60 or 70 bucks in ad revenue, and I don't do a bunch of mid-rolls on my videos. I just wanna put some things in perspective there. And if I were to do this full-time over the next few months, I, could, I think I would be at a full-time income within three months if I did YouTube full-time for the next few months. Just not interested in that, but I wanna put that into perspective for people because I have seen this done time and time again, I study a lot of people on this platform. A lot of people are able to replicate this. And so that's why I'm cautioning you to stay away from this kind of toxic content that tries to tear people's dreams down. I really hate that. And I'm not trying to 
come across as one of these super motivational people. I'm, I'm a realist. I realize that there's challenges to things out there. But I also realize that some of these people just give up because these people that they follow, they respect, they look up to, make this out to be like it's such a massive deal or deal when it's really not. Now, some might have heard of this. There's a theory among the scientific community, or it's a, it's a term called the lost Einstein. It doesn't necessarily exactly translate over to what I'm talking about, but there is some applicability. So the, the lost Einstein's theory is that there are many people out there who have gone through life doing some sort of some sort of line of work. Let's just say they worked at fast food and they could have been brilliant, some sort of a doctor or a physicist or nuclear engineer or electrical engineer, whatever, all these different things. But they never get to that point because there was some sort of barrier standing in their way. It was either money or they couldn't see a clear path to being able to get there. They just, they, they had all this potential they could have been something bigger that they wanted to be, but they never made it there. And when I see these kind of videos come out of people talking about how they're, they're these millionaires are struggling, saying that life is so hard, I think they are doing a lot of damage when they make those kind of videos because then these people are saying, they, they start putting these blocks in their minds saying, oh, well, this person who's made it has said that it's just, they, like, it's the hardest thing ever. And, you know, I, I don't know, I guess... Maybe I should just play it safe and do what I'm doing right now instead of this person saying, you know what? Yeah, there's times that it's challenging, but it's worth it. And I'm going to say this because even though I only have a very small channel, I'm going to say this, it is absolutely worth it. The amount of opportunities, the amount of doors that YouTube has opened up to me, even though, like I said, I'm coming on here making videos for fun. I'm not taking this as some sort of a serious job right now. Maybe that'll change in the future. I'm not going to say that it wouldn't ever change. But the amount of opportunities that have opened up to me as a result of this YouTube channel, even being a small channel, is unbelievable. Those of you who are looking at starting a channel or those of you who have started and you're trying to figure out a way to make it, I'm telling you, if you just keep pushing, you would be just, you would be absolutely shocked at the amount of opportunity that can come your way if you just stick with it. I'm also going to say this. I do not believe, I truly do not believe that YouTube is oversaturated. There is plenty of room for new people. And I'm going to say this, I realized that if all 8 billion people on this planet went and started a YouTube channel, that things would not work. But there are a ton of people that they really don't want to do a YouTube video, YouTube channel. They don't want to have the responsibility where they have to be coming on and making up this stuff and doing all this stuff. They want to go work for someone else. That's completely fine. I'm not hating on people that want to go work a nine to five. That is a perfectly good lifestyle for a lot of people. But there's a lot of people that really do want to do this. And there is a ton of room for new people to come in. The thing with making social media, and I'll cover this more and because I'll make a 5,000 subscriber video talking about all the stuff that I've been applying. I'm going to give away all my playbooks because I'm, I'm not going to hold on to any of this stuff. The people that want to come in and do this, I'll... You can take whatever out of my playbooks that you want if that's what you want to do. I have no problem with it. But So I'll reveal all of this stuff. But there is plenty of room for people. And the thing with social media is it's not about who's first. It's about who's better. If you can come into this and you can rapidly improve and you're putting in one or two hours a day on your education of how to make yourself a better YouTuber and you are going and putting that work into your videos, I'm going to tell you, you will see the results. Early on, it is a grind. The first six weeks that I was back on YouTube, I didn't pick up one subscriber. I didn't start gaining steam until three or four months in. I was picking up a couple of subscribers a day. And then right around October, November, I really started to see some results in the last couple of months. I mean, it's just the amount of support, the amount of growth has just been unbelievable. Like I said, I'm gonna cover all that in great detail in a later video. But the thing with all this is you're not going to know whether or not this is for you if you don't try. If you don't put in the, the, the honest work, the honest effort to be able to do this, you can't just come in and think you're gonna be able to make 10 videos and expect to get any sort of results. You're going to have to put in a lot of reps to be able to do this. But again, I cannot stress this enough. For those of you that wanna do this and you're serious about it, I'm telling you, it is worth it, and it will open up doors that you would have never thought were possible. Two other things, and then we'll wrap this up. First of all, I'm looking at some of your channels. I go look at the videos that you're making, so I'll give you an example. One of you, and you'll, as soon as I mention this, you'll probably, if you watch this video, you're going to know who you are as soon as I mention this. 
I was looking at one of your channels, and I, one of the people in particular, I kind of got the impression that the general theme of the content, the videos that were being uploaded, was kind of focused around videography. And I was looking at some of these videos, and they were getting good views. Like, this person, I think they had right around 1,000 subscribers, if I remember correctly. It's been a couple weeks since I checked in on their channel. But it looked like they had kind of a videography as kind of like a general theme. Some of their videos were getting a few hundred views. Some of them were getting 1,000 or 2,000 views. If you were a channel and you've got 100, 200, 500, 1,000 subscribers, and you go and make a video that gets 1,000 views, you have something there. Explore that further. Figure out how you can expand on that topic further. To give you an example, you can go take a look at my channel. The video that I made, I made it very early on. I think it was within the first month. was my best free Windows firewall. It was the guide about how to set up Portmaster. Up until just a couple of months ago, that was by far the most popular video on my YouTube channel. And there were days early on where I only had a couple hundred subscribers, and that video was getting two to three hundred views on some days. Some days it was getting a hundred views. I saw that and I was like, okay, this is working. This is something that people want to see. And I went and tested out other stuff. Like my video, it's the long tail of it has done incredibly well as my MK Docs material website video talking about how to set up an MK Docs website. I looked at that one again yesterday, and that one got 100 views over just the last two days. Some videos will take a while to get picked up by the algorithm. I've had some videos that took a month or two months, and then finally a bunch of views started coming in out of nowhere. But you're not ever going to know if you don't put in the work. And if you let your dreams get crushed by these people who go out and whine and complain about they have these great lives and they want to complain about how hard it is. It'll end up tearing you down and it can destroy your dreams. One last thing that I'll end this on because this video is way longer than I thought it was going to be. I didn't intend for it to go this long, but this was a really important video. And I'm being so passionate talking about this because the stuff needs to be said. I want people to hear something that's not this negative garbage. I'm bringing on, as long as these schedules work out, they're very, they've had a very hectic schedule. We've tried to make dates line up. Uh, previously, I just couldn't get things to work. It's looking like next week will be the first podcast that I'm doing on my channel. Now, the person that's coming on got their start on YouTube, interestingly enough. Their life has completely changed as a result of YouTube. Now, we're going to talk about, I realize that InfoSec is kind of like a general theme of my channel. Part of the podcast is going to be about this, but part of it's going to be about how this person completely changed their life, making social media content. And that's going to be very important for all of you that are watching my channel and you see this. Tuning in for next week's, as long, like I said, as long as the stars align and we are able to get it done next week, it, or if it doesn't get delayed for another week or two, as long as it is able to happen, you should really tune into that because it is going to really crystallize and make clear a lot of things that I am saying right now. Anyway, I hope you got a lot out of this video. As always, I want people to be able to take something away when they watch these videos. I don't want to do these five minute videos, just come in and spray and pray. Some people get really, I've seen some comments come up recently. Some people get really pissed off because they say that I talk too much and it's like, okay, well, if you just want a five minute video, then go watch a five minute video. I'm not going to make short videos. I'm not going to cater to a TikTok audience on my videos. That's just the way it is. People don't like it. Uh, there's only been a few people have mentioned it. Whatever. I want people to walk away with something. Though that being said, if you do have anything, so I'm going to make that video here within the next couple of weeks, probably. If there's anything in particular you want me to clarify in there, anything on the playbooks that I use, like any sort of process that I have. I'm going to try to leave no stone unturned when I make that video. But if there's anything you want clarified, make sure you drop a comment down below and let me know, and I will make sure I get it added into the video. With all that being said, I hope you have a good day. I hope you have a good weekend, and I will see you on next Friday.